Listen. What is kissing? Throw them all away. Throw the whole gamut of the couples away. Girl, Talisa Ray, what's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? We are reviewing Married at First Sight, season number 10, episode number 14, Fight or Flight. <laughs> Baby, they all should just call it quits, all of them, including Austin and Jessica, because she got on my nerves this episode. So, you know, normally we do couple by couple, but because this is the couple's retreat and everybody is together and we're all muddled up, we just going to go as they went, sort of, kind of. And I'm really probably not going to go like, you know, full on recap. I might, I might not because, you know, I'm behind like normal every day. Every day I'm hustling. Not really because I'm not sure. <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We checking in and chatting about this, that, and the third. Well... Like I said, it's the couple's retreat, and the first couple we see is Katie and Derek. They are on their way to uh, the house, and he wants to have a conversation about what occurred the previous episode. You know, her getting jealous about his little poem and shit, him going on the elephant date and shit up, you know, and in her feelings like big time. Not like a little bit, but a lot, because she does not want to have the conversation. The thing, though, that they did that I wanted to take away from the car ride is that they did talk about why they felt like the previous relationships didn't work. Derek was like because he had bad communication skills uh, and he didn't want to open up to love. Well, it seems like the things that he's been consistent with saying throughout the entire season. And then Katie, of course, she's insecure uh, and she wants to fight all the time about no quality time. Well, it looks like she hasn't changed much. much. Like, most people learn from previous relationships, right? And take in only the good stuff to the new relationship. Specifically, when you want to get married, you want to learn from the shit that you, you know, went through. Yeah, oh yeah, we're in a different space. Still in the living room, but like in another little like nook area, okay? Because I just wanted to switch it up. She was like, he annoys me. And I just was like, I just was like, she don't like him. Like, this is a waste of everybody's time and space and energy. They're the first ones to the cabin, so of course, or to the house, so they get to pick the first room, which is like this gigantic room with like walk-in closets. Y'all gonna be there for two days. It don't matter if y'all is in a closet together, okay? What's the big deal? Y'all gonna get in that bathtub? Mm, from what we've seen, you're not. So then there's Austin and Jessica who arrive next. Uh, Austin is irritated at the fact that she wanted to bring her crock pot. Now, everybody knows that you bring the things that you want with you because sometimes the uh, Airbnbs and uh, timeshares and shit like that don't have everything you want. Crockpots, they don't carry. He's a little irritated that he has to carry that damn crockpot around the house. He actually don't understand why he needed to bring it in the first place. Then they, then they start to cook. And my question is, why are they letting Jessica cook? Why is the two black girls letting Jessica cook? the entire trip somebody anybody maybe her food ain't too bland because they ate it maybe she had some seasons in her food any background noise you hear i got these boys honey one is on a game and one is over there you know recording his his album or whatever he doing child well then there's brandon and taylor who arrive next but before they get there, of course, it's not without any trouble. When we first see Brandon, he talks about how Taylor didn't come home, child. <laughs> that was one of the things he talked about in their recommitment like sessions. That she was acting as a single woman. That's the same thing they talked about when they were when they met with Dr. Pepper. He felt like she was acting single. Not only did, not only did she go out, but she stayed out and texted him at 3 a.m. in the morning, like, "Hey yo, I, I slept, I overslept over my friends at my friend's hotel when I dropped them off." Now I know they just met, but I don't know any married man or woman for that matter that would be just okay with that. 
like you wasn't trying to hurry up and come back what was you doing child let me tell you something what kind of friend number one number two this is my thoughts as i was watching number one number two is the majority of times that you decide that you're gonna stay out you're gonna be sleep like that you be drunk you have no regard for your spouse um you don't care about their feelings and nine times out of ten okay seven ten times out of ten you probably fuck it now y'all could be disagreeing with me if you want to but do that down below in the comments you understand me so then they get in the car ride now brandon expresses his disdain to the camera right to the to his, to his cell phone but does not express does not express it to Taylor when they had the perfect time in the car and she was like I, I know it's not that I was out with my friend I told him I apologized well now you know that that's what it was and I'm actually over the both of y'all like y'all could just call it quits like you're not really in it and he don't know how to communicate what his dislikes are is it because he gets upset is it because he has like anger management issues? Is it because he'd rather not say nothing while he's in a heated state because it gets too volatile? That's a question for y'all. Like, is that why? Honey, he just decides I'm gonna put in my ear pods and I'm gonna just go to sleep. It's like they best friends or something. Like they friends going on a road trip. Y'all ain't went nowhere yet. You tired already? Anybody, somebody help me. So the last couple to arrive is Mika and Michael. They have this awkward conversation in the car. Mika, well, what are you trying to get out of this trip? He's like, I just want to hang out and be with the boys and watch the game. Well, that's not the answer she was looking for, Michael. She wanted to hear, you know, what the, this is the retreat that determines one week away. This is the retreat that would help solidify whether or not you stay or you go. Y'all making a decision. You are making a decision in one week. So you didn't think, you know, to spend some quality time and get to know my wife a little better? Like, I understand why she's irritated. But I also um, don't understand why she continues to ask questions that she knows he's not going to answer or that he does not have the right answer for. Like, he does not know how to be a husband like you do not know how to be a wife. And it is not a thing that comes naturally, okay? It is something that takes work, okay? I'm going to just be honest. It's something that is trial and error, but you both have to really be willing to try and make changes. And though your mouths are saying you're going to stop lying and you are going to be a soft landing place, neither of you are doing that. And just call it quits. So listen, then they get there and she like uh, damn near walks 15 feet really fast in front of him. He ain't saying nothing. Like this is just, this, this is just crazy. It's just, I don't understand it. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go into these things that just, uh, you know, fuck them kitchen conversations. You know what I'm saying? And all them little, before they got here, I'm gonna just weave it all in together because Katie and Jessica had a whole conversation about how Katie thought that, um, she was doing all the work. She was initiating everything. I mean, we've seen him, we've seen, uh, Derek make some, take some initiative on some things, especially things that like, that she didn't like. But honey, let me tell you something. Brandon and Michael are outside, but they have a whole conversation. All the, everybody else is at the table. And Katie's ass is writhing with jealousy because Derek and Taylor are laughing and kiki and ha ha and Taylor is, oh, you, you, you know, you've really got a good catch. He's such a great guy. And uh, Derek seems a little more relaxed and comfortable and being himself. Like, all you see is the green-eyed monster. And I'm honestly looking like, first off, she was like, you gonna sit over there next to her and not me? First off, that's her own insecurities because she's comparing herself to Taylor, who's gorgeous, right? So you gonna sit next to her? Well, there's not another seat by you. If you wanna switch seats, ask Taylor to switch seats with you so that you can sit next to your man because you feeling like, I, like she gonna say, I take your man right out the box. She might if you let her, if you keep on going in the route that you're going and being foolish and silly and getting up and storming off. And then you got Mika in there with you with uh, Jessica and Mika 
giving, you know, advice and shit need to really be concerned about her own shit. Uh, cause you say that, you know, he's in there not being weird and awkward and a dork. Like who says that about their spouse? Somebody, anybody like you don't like him the way she was talking about him and berating him in that fucking bathroom. I was like, she needs to just call it quits. Like, what are we doing? Why are we here? What part of this relationship do you really want to be in? There's that not that much jealousy in the world that would cause you to say such horrible things. I mean, if you guys both said yes, and you sitting and you watching this, you should be cringing at the sound of your own voice and the things that you are saying about this man who is putting in a gallant effort and doing the best that he can. Like I've never seen somebody apologize and run after somebody so much. Like they feel like, oh, you should be, she, he should have came in here and chased after me. He been chasing after your little ugly self the whole time. Y'all forgive me, forgive me. Hold on, hold on. See, I, this one, you know, I'm irritated. Then you got Brandon and Michael outside, you know, talking about what's disrespectful and what's not. Like I said, I think you better let it go. Let it go, baby. It looks like another love TKO. Like walk away, walk on by. This is too much. And Michael asked Brandon, listen, if decision day was tomorrow, what would you say? You should have just said, I would say no. No, thank you. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, thank you. I don't want to be here. But you said you don't know what you don't know. Then you got Katie returning to the table who is still with a sour face and feeling some type of way about Derek. I mean, about Derek and, and Taylor's conversation gets up in storms. Then the people are like, oh, I think you should be the one to go after her this time. Like, And honestly, I just didn't see such a big deal, but I'm not an insecure, jealous person. Listen, if you can get my man, he was never mine to begin with. But the way that you talk about him and the way you treat him um, would make it appear like you don't want him yourself. So he's fair game. Listen, because Taylor don't have no problem with flirting and kiki and ha ha with everybody. That's what it seems like to me. And that's why she can't seem to stay focused on her own situation because she wants to do this that and the third and every time he's talking Derek and trying to apologize and trying to understand the situation she is shooting him down she wants him just to shut up and be quiet while she gets to talk down to him be argumentative berate him be belligerent like nobody wants to sit and fucking listen to none of that and I'm nobody when I say that, I mean nobody. I mean, not one person wants to sit and hear you tell me and nag at me about what I'm doing wrong, but I can't say nothing in return. The devil is a lie. So then Michael, hey, he comes in the house and he says, um, you ready to go to bed? Mika, true to form, says what? I think we should sleep in separate rooms. Now, ladies, and y'all probably gonna get mad at me because I'm not sympathizing with Michael. What I am about to say, though, may upset some of you. You cannot send your spouse out the room to sleep in another room and think that issues are going to resolve themselves. When you wake up in the morning the next morning and you feel like he's talking to everybody other than you, and granted, he probably should have shared some information with you prior to, um, think about this. You cannot resolve any issues that you have in separate rooms. You are not going to heal. You are not going to mend things. You are not going to understand one another. If you insist on, you need, I think it's best that you sleep in another room tonight. You don't like him. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Like, what are we doing and why? What is the point of your relationship? You want Michael to act like a husband. You want him to talk more, but you keep putting him in another room. You keep dismissing him. And then on the flip side, he keeps allowing it. Like, be a man. 
and, and and tell her no i'm not sleeping in another room i think that we need to be in the same room together we need to resolve our issue we need to have a conversation i need you to hear what i'm saying and not say anything let me speak for a moment and you not rant and rave about what you think that i'm doing wrong like they both need to come to some common ground and figure it out because i really feel like these, these two fools is gonna say yes i hope i'm wrong y'all i hope i hope eyes fingers toes legs crossed i hope that i am absolutely wrong when i'm saying that they're gonna say yes because they're gonna ruin each other's lives two people like them who aren't ready for marriage one lies too much and one you know i don't know what i don't know mika it would get on my nerves too but if you're gonna stick it stick it out you gotta figure out a way around it and I don't want that for you either because you're not happy and you're becoming that aggressive or angry black woman that everybody talks about. So I'm hoping that you said no and you didn't say yes. I'm hoping you didn't stay in this because you need you need someone that you can be happy with. And you don't seem like you would be happy with Michael. And Michael doesn't seem like he would be happy with you. Michael might because he right now at this point would be happy just to be with anybody. That's hot. I said what I said. I said what I said, okay? He would be happy to be with who takes him at this particular time in life. He's willing to put up with everything that he doesn't like about you just to say that he has a wife. There I said it. Be mad, don't be mad. So listen, now that everybody is in the bed and sleeping, honey, Taylor come prances her ass outside with that horrible hair, honey. Come sit outside and sits on his lap. Grand gesture. For her to sit on his lap and to make try to make some type of connection. It's because she's drunk. Honey, her little, her little vagina juices is flowing. Honey, it's like Niagara Falls. You know, she's attracted to him. And she's like, if he could just fall in line. If he would just fall in line. And, you know, he might could get some. Like, if he would just do that whole thing about, no, I, I can't take a shot. I'll just have some wine. I thought, your wife wants you to loosen up and take a shot. What are, we, what are we doing? How are they choosing these people and why? Was he found in the mall too? Like, was she found in the mall on social, on social media? Is this something that they really wanted to do? Because, yo. So, when she sits on his lap, he is disinterested. He is downright rude. The energy that he was giving her, like ignoring her. I wouldn't have sat on his lap. Did the producers say go sit on his lap? Did they say, Taylor, go outside and sit on Brandon's lap? Like, are they egging this shit on? Like, because baby, I'm going to tell you, once I felt like the energy was bad when I sat down on your lap and you was looking all around on your phone and all that shit, guess who, guess who would have walked out the door? Guess who would have got off your lap? Guess who would have just sat over there and been like, so let's have a conversation. Me! But she comes up and she says, oh, I saw your, 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 your Marvin's post. Evidently, she was at a bar or somewhere that he delivers to and they posted a picture of her. And he was upset about it. He felt some kind of way about it. Taylor's not the girl for him. Taylor's not the woman for him. You know why? Because Taylor is outgoing. Taylor likes to be out on the scene. He is a homebody. She needs somebody that is going to match her energy. That is going to go out with her. That is going to party with her. You know, and understand that um, she's a look. She's a vibe. She's, you know, she is an awesome. She's a brand. You know what I'm saying? Not going to be ashamed to be with her. You know, and that, and I don't know if he would be ashamed. I'm not saying that he's ashamed, but he wants her to be something that she's not. She's very outgoing, very uh, energetic, very want, very friendly. So they, they, if they were to work, they would have to find common ground. She'd have to, you know, scale back some on her party in, and he'd have to scale his up some. Like, but that's not fair. That's not fair to either one of them. He wants somebody that is going to be at home she wants somebody that's gonna be out i don't know y'all somebody lied when they signed up he's uncomfortable i guess with her single mindset is what i'm hearing him say like the way she feels and next thing you know things go left real fucking quick she went from lovey-dovey she want that lovey-dovey okay that's not how the song go but whatever the t-pain song listen 
to very defensive, very aggressive, very loud, very like in your face, calls him a bitch, like very like she shouldn't drink. Like she went from I want to fuck to I want to fuck you up. Like I just was like, this isn't healthy. This is toxic. Um, I'm glad that he's staying seated because she is like in his face. Now I said it before and I'm going to say it again. She's used to toxic relationships. She's used to that back and forth and somebody probably shaking the shit out of her. Nobody wants to be grabbed. Sit down, Taylor. Move out of my face. Nobody wants to do the heat. She's used to something being a little more combative. And he's not giving that to her. But I just was really shocked. Like, Taylor. Like, really was I shocked? No, because we've seen glimpses of this side of her behavior. Very aggressive. Very I beat your ass. Very you not listening and I don't give a fuck about what you got to say. You're wrong. See, this is like, I was just like, oh. Will the real Taylor please stand up? Please stand up. And as soon as Taylor walked out, honey, the real Brandon, please stand up. Please stand up because he took a whole entire left. I feel like all the aggression that he had and how upset he was with Taylor because she's a woman. He didn't want to take that out on her that he decided, I don't want to be a part of this. This has embarrassed me. I'm embarrassed by her standing and yelling at me the way she has and disrespecting me. And I can't do anything about it because she's a woman. So I'm going to take this aggression out on the next person. I don't want these cameras and these mics on me anyway. So why not let me pick on you? I think he went, he was wrong and went way left. Like, uh, I really feel like he was out of line. Like it was unnecessary. Like he could have just sat there quietly. When they said, can you go and do whatever? He could have been like, yo, I need a second. I can't go in there with her. This is not working out. This is not what I expected. But instead it got ugly. Take this off. What you gonna do? What you gonna, I thought, what the fuck? How high school is, it ain't even high school. How junior high school, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Sit that caveman ass shit down somewhere, Brandon, and be articulate and speak like a man and say what it is that you want and what you don't want. And if I could have a few moments off camera, I need to gather myself together. I don't know if I don't know if that's wrong or I shouldn't be saying it, but that's how I fucking feel. And I'm all I, I'm all like she doesn't communicate effectively and he doesn't either. She always gets so defensive and he's clams up and shuts down so then he goes in the room of course he doesn't have his mic on and gets to get his bag and pack his shit like where you going what you doing where you going what you doing where you going why what is all of this about what what's happening all you had was a couple glasses of wine and some beer and then you you get ugly i i like happy drunks i'm a happy drunk that's who i like to be around people that want to have a good time when they get drunk not when they want to fight my husband used to get aggressive when i told him that he stopped drinking like you can't drink if you're gonna be aggressive so he goes into the room and then all of a sudden i'm all like it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with fucking, with Taylor. Like now she's all sweet and calm and shit. I was like, this is crazy. Like what happened? Was it that much time in between that you were able to relax and sober up? Because this was like night and day. I don't know if I'm the only person that read it that way. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what you think. Cause I sure was like, yeah, no. This isn't a good look. This is not healthy for nobody. Then they go in the bathroom and they hollering and screaming like, she, I just want to talk. Don't touch me, Taylor. Don't touch me. I'm all like, what the fuck is happening? And then he says, let me record you because you like to get the stories misconstrued. And then she tells the producers, I just wish you guys never would have came in here. What would that have done? You had already belittled the man, embarrassed the man, berated the man. Talked down to the man, called him a bitch and everything. Like, you know, most black men can't handle being called a bitch. Where women, we be bitches all day long. Call a black man a bitch. They want to fight you. What is we doing? What is we doing? Let's sing it together. I think you better let it go. Let it go, baby. It looks like another love TKO. Like, what are, what are we doing and why? So here we are. It's the next morning. Uh, all that commotion and nobody woke up. Nobody walked around. The house is that big that nobody heard that shit between Taylor and Brandon. I know you fucking lying because I would have been like, 
what is going on especially when i'm not sleeping in a place that is my own i am very alert i'm already alert when i'm at home like my kids can't even walk in my room when i'm sleeping without me going what y'all want i gotta be dead dog tired or drunk and so I'm wondering why nobody heard nothing. But I guess they were all a little inebriated, intoxica intoxicated, feeling real good. So we wake up. And Katie and Derek, Derek, true to form, I just want to apologize. Shut that simping ass shit up. What are you apologizing for? Like, I really be feeling like we aren't getting enough. I'm not getting enough information from the producers. They're not, they're not showing us enough footage for me to get what these people were talking about it's making them look crazy because if he isn't initiating things the stuff we see is him initiating so if he's not initiating enough stuff with her i need to see that give me more of that stop making us look crazy because katie looked crazy as hell and then she goes on and apologize and she was like because i do have a little crush on you because i got jealous with you and taylor which means i do care yeah it does it does mean that you have some very strong feelings because you don't get jealous about stuff you don't care about you get indifferent you get like okay do whatever you want to do like i'm good it's cool like it don't bother you but when you've got some kind of feelings you get jealous but i think she's easily uh tweets anyway like because she's a spoiled brat and wants things her way period point blank so brandon's all like he's leaving he's going back now uh we knew yesterday that brandon or the day before brandon needed to go he needed to work okay so the couple's retreat really what well, he wouldn't have been there all day he didn't really want to be bothered because you can make provisions you can tell your job i need the day off you could do that uh along with brandon is michael michael says uh, the night before that his uncle had passed away and he was crying in front of his wife and she was just looking at him all cold hearted because she didn't know what to believe Michael like you're a straight up actor to her now like is this real or isn't this real so of course she's not going to console you uh, I mean you want her to fake it she can't that's how come y'all need to call it quits and go your separate ways like because nobody wants to fake it till they make it nobody wants to be unhappy until things turn around y'all just met you should have some kind of euphoric feeling about one another so michael needs to go to dc so that he can make some arrangements for the funeral oh you do you responsible for that i get i, I don't is it your mom T's husband who is it mm -hmm. nobody else can do it okay now when he comes in the kitchen he tells everybody i'll be back later and he that he has to go into town and make some arrangements <laughs> and mick is like shit it's the first time I, i'm hearing about this shit myself i'm all like he was supposed to share this with you on the way up but y'all or or the day before or whatever but y'all aren't communicating effectively y'all are in a place where you want to share either of you want to share information that is important to you like I hope y'all don't say yes next week. Is it next week or is it the week after? I hope they don't say yes. Well, honey, the shenanigans continue because Mike goes out to the car. One of the produce, the cameraman is like, well, if you don't uh, unlock the door, we can't take you. He talking to Brandon. Brandon in the van with the doors locked because he's afraid that they trying to trick him. What they trying to trick you for? Cause they going you think they gonna record you? They probably would have record recorded you, but you signed up for this, bro. Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, you can't be that fucking dysfunctional that you can't handle cameras in your face and people talking to you for a little while. Like, the drama. Listen. That's why Taylor called you a bitch because you got bitch assness all up in you. I'm just saying you acting like a bitch. See a bitch, call a bitch. Like <laughs> in the kitchen, Taylor talks about him being emotional and irrational, but really y'all the same because you're emotional. You went, you flip flop, you know, flip like a pancake on him the night before, and you're irrational because of the things that you were saying about he couldn't even talk like. So y'all the same. That's why they put y'all together because both of y'all toxic and they do it would be good TV. That's what I'm saying. That's what I think. Well, Austin and Jessica go to a tavern. Mika and Taylor go to uh, paranormal activity since Michael isn't back in time on time. And they all like, I'm glad it was just us. I was like, okay. 
in the car, uh, Taylor texts, I mean, Brandon texts Taylor and like, I'm not coming back, enjoy your retreat. Like, can you say pushing buttons? That's all they do to one another is just push each other's buttons. And though she says she doesn't want him to come back, she does. She wants him to come back. She wants to work things out, but they can't seem to get it right. We could go back to Panama and say after Panama, you could just forget it. She found out that he didn't take his medication. I shouldn't say that that's not nice because there are people who really have mental health issues that take medication to keep them stable. So I, I'm, forgive me for that, y'all. I don't mean to offend nobody, but his erratic behavior says that maybe he should go see a psychologist. Not just a, uh, a I mean, nope that he should see a psychiatrist, not just a psychologist, someone who can prescribe medications because he might have a chemical imbalance. Derek and Taylor. Derek and Katie go on a little golf cart thing and she feels like he's a bad boy. See, for her, that's the element that's missing because remember, he's an engineer, he's a nerd, he's real geeky, he's awkward, he's weird, he does not have the swag that she wants. Um, I guarantee you that there are several women that are swooning over Derek right now. So Mike comes back just in time for dinner. Again, they letting Jessica cook like, maybe it was good. Some others know how to add seasoning. Maybe she does. Okay, let's, let's go with that. Maybe she, maybe she does. Um, but listen, Mike comes back. Everybody's outside, everybody's in the kitchen or whatever. Oh, welcome back, blah, blah, blah. I had some things to take care of for my uncle's funeral. Honey, they get down to that, sit down at that table, and it was like, it was like gang up on Mike. It was like they had talked so bad about Brandon and Mike all weekend long that when Mike got there he did not stand a fucking chance they got to asking him well where were you uh and what did you have to do and then mika so did you see brandon and he was like well we dropped him off at the festival well you said you weren't with him all day like it was just it was like he was on trial the energy was so bad because mika had been feeding them all day and then you got the two fellas the only two fellas left, you know, Austin and Derek, not saying nothing, not like, hey, mind your own business. Like, like they were afraid to jump into this hen's house. Like, <laughs> and then I was just like, Jessica, sit back, shut the fuck up. Like, why does it matter to you what's happening? I mean, it's so, it just, it was, it was disheartening. But of course, Mika's like, see, now everybody else can see what I've been going through. Like, Mika, that's, that's baby that's not what we do we don't want to embarrass people we don't want to shame people michael's already private and nervous about everything anyway that's not what we want to do and i was just uncomfortable like with that whole gang up on michael thing now michael his story did seem a little choppy right sometimes it's that he's not articulating himself well so it comes off wrong because he's giving bits and pieces but it was a little choppy where people were looking at you sideways but i still don't agree with that whole gang up on michael thing and make him feel uncomfortable where he gets up and he leaves and taylor's all like Psh, whatever you know misery likes company understand that mika misery likes company and taylor was miserable unhappy because brandon wasn't there for her to fight with to flip flop switch with so she was like well we might as well let's just let's just get poor michael like i i don't agree with it and i don't agree with her allowing it to happen like even if you have an issue with your husband, it is your responsibility as a wife to still protect him like you would want him to protect you. So the moment that started happening, you could have been like, all right, guys, let's just get off of him. You see, it's an uncomfortable situation, but you don't like him. You don't like him, so it doesn't really matter, does it? You really don't care. People you care about, that you're concerned about, um, you come to their defense at least stop him from looking crazy because he did look crazy like 
I'm just saying, I don't know. That really pretty much ends this episode. So I think we got one more day with this next week. And then is it the week after that? I'm not sure. Listen, I ain't gonna even lie to y'all and tell y'all I'm gonna get it up on time this week coming up. I, I can't even do it. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what you think about this episode. It's a whole shit show. They should all get thrown in the trash, okay? Uh, Austin and Jessica, of course, are always still sal salvageable, but I just don't like, you. we got to see Jessica's controlling, uh, condescending, look high, look down low from a high attitude on this episode. At least I got a clear picture of it. Anyway, uh, let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you for watching my review of Married at First Sight, Season 10, Episode 14, Flight or Fight. Fight or Flight. If it's your first time visiting my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Why don't you be part of my family? Become a ray of sunshine. Right next to the subscribe button is the notification bell. Click that too. So you're alerted when I finally upload these videos. Like Lastly, because you like me and I know it's real, give me a thumbs up. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next video.